Good Saturday morning, everyone. Today on Perspectives, exciting things are happening within Alabama's community college system. New educational programs are available now to help people get valuable training in the fields of manufacturing and industry. One of the programs is called FAME, an acronym for Alabama's Federation for Advanced Manufacturing Education. Now, according to the ACCS, FAME partners students with industry while they take classes at select community colleges. At Bishop State Community College, students serve as apprentices to a sponsoring manufacturing employer. For example, hands-on training at companies that work in the oil and gas industry are being offered. The program at Bishop State officials say was the first of its kind in the nation. And the oil and gas industry is just one avenue for good jobs. Other programs are also being created. This morning, we're also going to tell you about the Alabama Community College's Innovation Center. Now, based in Montgomery, the Innovation Center creates custom content for workforce training in the state. One of the trade skills being taught at the Gulf Shores campus of Coastal Community College is training in the restaurant and hospitality industry. Students of all ages can learn to be chefs, bartenders, and servers. Students learn the finer points of serving food and beverages and are taught how to present the cuisine and maximize their customer service skills. Well, joining us to discuss these new educational opportunities are Jennifer Hall, the Alabama Community College System's Regional Workforce Director for the Southern Region, and David Felton, he's Bishop State's Community College's Dean of Workforce Development. Also this morning, Mara Harrison joins us. She is the special assistant to the Chancellor for Education and Workforce Transformation, as well as the interim executive director for the Alabama Community College Systems Innovation Center. So if you're graduating from high school between jobs or looking for better career opportunities, we've got some exciting news for you this morning. Perspectives continues after this quick break. Our guests this morning, Jennifer Hall and David Felton. Now, Jennifer is the ACCS Regional Workforce Director, the Southern Region, and David, he is the Bishop State Community College's Dean of Workforce Development. We thank you both for being here this morning. Some exciting information you're sharing that programs are now going to be offered here in the Mobile Gulf Coast area through the ACCS program. Jennifer, why don't you tell us first about the program? It's called FAME, and that's an abbreviation of a very important uh, acronym. Tell us what FAME means. Absolutely. Um, FAME stands for the Federal um, Federation for Feder yes. Advanced Manufacturing. Yes, yes, yes it's a lot. It's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it really and there is. are um, there are currently 37 chapters uh -huh. um, across the United States and five here in Alabama. You know, the program, I think, is extremely timely for today's students as well as those who want to be in the workforce. This is not just about uh, being a college student, but this is a program where you all are preparing people to go to work with the skills they need. Tell us how it works. Yeah, sure. Um, well, basically, FAME works on an apprenticeship-style uh, basis, and that's where the students will come to the college for two days a week, and then for the rest of the week, they'll be working with a sponsoring uh, manufacturing company. So they truly do get immersed in the um, skill sets of what's being trained in, in, the, in the classroom as well as that being reinforced in the uh, workplace as well. Now, David, Bishop State is now just getting into the program this year. Are you expecting a huge amount of students to come after hearing about the availability? How many can you handle? Well, we'll handle up to 20 students uh, per class, and we do expect to at least get 15 to 20 with the uh, response that we're getting from the local high schools. Uh, the seniors will be, um, they're, they're seniors now, and they'll be going through a process of uh, applying for the program and that will be um, taking place late this spring. Uh, they'll be accepted and will actually start to work with the employer over the summer to get an idea of what that job will be and then al also to be able to earn some income to help with their living expenses and the classes will actually start in the fall. Now, Jennifer, as you mentioned, this is a program being offered at 30 some locations around the state. What 
what was the need that was seen for a program of this type in today's workforce? So absolutely, there are 37 actually across the nation and five here in Alabama. Um, we have two new programs starting this year, um, one at Trenum State in Montgomery and then here at Bishop State. Now the Bishop State program is very unique in that the other programs are for advanced manufacturing technicians where the Bishop State program is for process technicians. You know, we know that the, the oil and gas industry here around Mobile is um, just booming. And so mm. that was really the need. And that program, of course, is the first of its kind in the nation. And it started here in Mobile and it will be scaled across the nation. And, and Bishop State's program will be the model for all of the others. This is extremely exciting when you is. all talk about the yeah. opportunities that are going to be available for students right here. Now, uh, for someone hearing this information, what do they need to bring to the table? Uh, could you repeat that again, Eric? Yeah, for the people who are hearing about this program being offered, what skills or uh, excitement or motivation do they need to bring to the table to be accepted into this program? Okay, so the basic requirements is that you're, of course, graduated from high school, and that's pretty much the, the only um, qualification that's needed. You do need to be 18 by the time the fall semester comes, and that's pretty much it. Now, you do require to um, be maybe a little bit higher skills as far as your math and English are for this program compared to some of the other programs, but it's still very basic in nature. Uh, so anybody graduating from high school should be able to qualify and apply for this program. Now, David, do you have to go out and uh, recruit the businesses who are working with you, or does the student have a relationship with the business? How does that collaboration. Well, that, that's one of the most significant things about this program, that it is being sponsored by, by companies. It, it, I, I, they actually form a chapter and they help drive this program. So it is industry-driven program. It meets the needs of industry. And uh, like I said, the, the, the students that go through this program, they'll have a leg up when, when they complete the program. And we found that um, students who graduate as a FAME student earn 25% more than non-FAME graduates. So it's, it's a great program and it really, really prepares them um, to enter you know, a high wage occupation. That's, that's exciting to hear. Now, Jennifer, talk about those students who may have a hesitancy because they think they're going into another learning school environment only and they may say shy away from hearing that it's tied into a community college, but yet, Talk about the difference of how you all are meeting the needs for the student who comes in, and it's not just being a student here. Absolutely. Well, one of the unique things I think about the Alabama Community College system is one, we're student-centered, but also all of our programs are industry-led, and we, we design our programs to meet the specific needs that are shared with industry. And so we also offer wraparound services to all of our students to provide tutoring and support. And we want all of our students to be successful. And we go above and beyond to try to make that happen. Um, I think the unique thing about this program is that it's a work-based learning environment. And so they'll come in and of course go to class two days a week, but then they work three days a week. And so they're able to see how what they learn in the classroom is applicable at their job and I think that's a great um, setup it's a great way for students to continue and progress through the program um, and enter their when they finish enter their occupation um, prepared to be successful my goodness and you talk have that feel of uh, apprenticeship OJT type of program I remember back in the day uh, one of the major shipyards in Virginia they had their own university so to speak community college system on the shipyard grounds so people were working as well as getting the uh, learning aspect of it in under their belts as well. And very quickly, let's talk about uh, how people can sign up and register for the FAME program. Yes, Eric, there's several ways. One is um, for the students to um, get with their high school counselors. They, they know about this program here in Mobile County. Uh, they can also uh, contact us at Bishop State. There's, there's a link on our webpage as, as well. You can um, find, find the number on our webpage to make a phone call to us. Well, Jennifer and David, we thank you both so much for sharing this morning. Why don't you leave a message to someone who's watching this morning and they're excited about what they're hearing, but they want to know, should I think about this? Should I do this? Why don't you each give them a brief message of motivating them to come on and be a part of your program? 
Yeah. Absolutely. If you have any interest in joining us at, at Bishop State Community College and enrolling in our FAME program, please give us a call. If you have any interest, we can walk you through the process and we try to make it as easy as we can to make this process seamless and get you started. And I might add to that, just keep in mind that this is a, a program where you'll have a living wage while you're Absolutely. getting trained. Uh, so that's important. We want you to have the goal of not having a student loan when you finish this program. Well, I tell you, we thank you both so much for being a part and sharing the information this morning. David Felton and Jennifer Hall, and of course, uh, David, as we mentioned, you were the Bishop State Community College Dean of Workforce Development. I love that title, Dean of Workforce Development, mm -hmm. and Jennifer, ACCS Regional Workforce Director, mm -hmm. Southern Region, and both of you making some good things happen here in our local community, and we hope that uh, you have a lot of great response this morning from the, your time that you spent with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank Eric. You. Welcome back to Perspectives and a lot of great things happening in the Alabama Community College system. We're joined now by Mara Harrison. Now, Ms. Harrison is a special assistant to the Chancellor for Education and Workforce Transformation. She's also the interim director of the ACCS Innovation Center. And Mara and I, we've had a chance to talk prior to our interview now on camera. Tell us exactly what is the Innovation Center and how does it work? Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for having me. I, um, the Innovation Center um, has a physical presence, but probably the biggest misconception is that it is a center that will house students for training purposes. That's not what it is. It, it's actually a support center for the community colleges. And what the Innovation Center has done is to partner with state associations that are representations of business and industry found in the state of Alabama and we create create custom content for um, for workforce training throughout the state. So we essentially are in existence to help these community colleges have a greater outreach and to be able to provide rapid non-credit training for uh, workforce development. So how do you target which area you're going to go into to develop into a program for the uh, benefit of both the students and what the needs of the state are? So by working with the state associations, we're able to capture really the statewide need, and that, that's what we're after. We'd like to identify the, um, the occupations that are found most in demand in the state that provide a livable wage, and that can be trained pretty fast, but that would appeal to industries that are, have representation all over. If you consider a, um, a CDL driver, that's um, someone who, has a, who holds a commercial driver's license, that is a need that's found not just within the state of Alabama, but actually throughout the nation and so in the state of Alabama we want to make sure that we have representation from large companies who would hire CDL drivers and small companies um, those in rural areas and those in urban areas as well so we can really capture the entire state need. Now you were sharing with me that this is really a growing area and a demand area because there's a lot of folk now who are retiring out of it and we don't have as many people ready to fall into those positions? That's right. The Innovation Center actually is training for jobs that are considered middle-skilled jobs. And that's a term that the nation has adopted in Alabama as well. And what that means is it's actually 57% of all American jobs are considered middle range and that's requiring some skill but not necessarily a degree. So the, the beauty of it for the community colleges is that we serve the entire community. And so these, these work Workforce jobs are generally in the non-credit area. That means that they can be turned over in less than a semester, and um, and so we put together programs that will be able to have that appeal for for all industries. And and it's in in that middle skilled age that you could give it to someone who's 18. You can if a person who's younger than that and they can be hired, um, they're able to take the training as well, um, all the way up through adulthood. This is really exciting what you all are doing now. You recently finished some training at the first round of training at Gulf Shores at your coastal Alabama campus there. Tell us about that and how it went. We, that's right. We did conduct the first training in, on the Gulf Shores campus at, um, at Coastal Community College, and, and we chose that area because we are under pilot year, and when that is one program for um, employees wanting to find em employment in food and beverage services, so people wanting to work in restaurants and bars and um, and we wrote the course with a partnership from the 
um, Alabama Tourism Council, the um, Restaurant and Hospitality Association, Alabama Travel Council. They helped us form a task force to be able to create the curriculum that would be applicable for all restaurants and bars throughout the state. And, um, and we piloted the first program at Coastal. Uh, the courses are very unique in that they are two parts. The first part is held on a virtual platform and the second part has an in-person lab. So the in-person lab is actually the component that took place on Coastal's campus. Uh, we enrolled 15 people and the ages ranged from 19 to 67. And we're happy to report that 100% of those people um, were employed after the training. That, that's a good result of your program. Now, tell us about the importance of what you are uh, sharing and teaching because it's not just about how to do one job in the restaurant or at the bar, so to speak. That's right. The um, What companies have asked us to train for is, is the skill sets that are required for particular jobs, but also how each employee works together as a team to make the entire operation function. So if you think about a kitchen setting or a restaurant and bar setting, there are front of the house applications and, and back of the house applications. And the front of the house would be those jobs like hostess and server that would communicate fully with customers and the customer experience. And back of the house would be those people working in the kitchen as a, a prep chef or a um, working on the assembly line for expediting the menu items to get them back out to the front of the house. So so this course makes sure that everyone taking it is fully aware of all of the jobs that make the restaurant run very smoothly. And, um, and that's been really important to the, the restaurant owners that services in, is very important in that field, as you know, for, the, um, for all of hospitality and tourism. And right now, after facing a um, hardship from the pandemic, there are not enough employees on a regular day, and so asking those employees to come out and, and and teach new employees how to become better service-based individuals is sometimes feels impossible. And so that's what we're doing with the course. We make them fully aware of the entire experience so that when the, um, the course is ended, then a person is able to get a job in any of those positions. Now you mentioned a wide range of the age of the students coming to your program. Should I say students or, or clients? How, the, how do we say that? Well, the, for the community college, we always call them um, um, students but for these okay. programs these are not necessarily community college students in fact that's part of the beauty of the program is that um, the Innovation Center is a division of the Alabama Community College system which serves all community colleges and so if you were to register at a particular college then you might only be able to have access to the courses that they create this this opportunity allows any student regardless of whether they're a community college student or not to be able to participate Participate. So we call them participants because they are they are generally not traditional community college students. Yes. And um, but this is a nice way for them to be able to kind of get a glimpse of what community college education looks like. And it's not always a two year degree. And you said someone from you had. 18 up to 67, so there's no uh, requirement to be under, say, 40, so to speak. No, absolutely not. As long as an industry will hire the individual, we will allow them to have training. So where do you go here next? Since you've got this one in place now and it will be available throughout the state, where are you headed next? Yes, so our next pilot will be with Reed, and this is um, Reed Technical College, and um, and that's for a, um, a CDL program. As I said before, the CDL um, courses are gonna be actually in four parts. Um, CDL Class A licensure will be for people who would like to drive an 18-wheeler. Um, the Class B license can be a variety of things. It can be um, a school bus driver, as long as there is a passenger endorsement, and a school bus endorsement, if you wanted to drive a Greyhound bus or um, any kind of uh, busing like that, you'd have to have the passenger endorsement for Class B. And then there are also CDL Class B licenses for people who want to drive construction vehicles, so dump trucks and um, concrete trucks and even uh, agricultural equipment. So tell us, how does one find out what the Innovation Center is offering and what's that next step once they 
make that reach out and the contact to you? So during, during this year, we will be piloting one program at each individual college. And once we, once we pilot it and we um, make sure that we don't need to make adjustments to the curricula, then we will expand it statewide. And that's what's happening right now with the hospitality courses. Um, we are under legislative allocation for $10 million and um, the governor actually contributed another $1 million toward the hospitality field so that we can rapidly train for the World Games. So that was our first focus. But now once we pilot the CDL programs and we'll expand those statewide. And, um, and if anyone is interested in the way that that expansion will work, we have a website. Um, it's innovation.accs.edu and a participant or future participant or a company who would like to hire from it can enter in their information from that website and then we will send out a blast email when um, the training starts to take place at different locations across the state. Mara Harrison, the interim executive director of the ACC CS Innovation Center. Some exciting things taking place within the system and we thank you this morning for coming and sharing. Thank you for having me. And for more information on courses available, look up the website innovation.accs.edu. Now, as for what the FAME program can do for you, you can also check out the Alabama Community College System website at accs.edu. Also, give Bishop State Community College a call as well at 251-406-7000 or look up information on their website, bishop.edu. Well, up next on Perspectives, Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine, Ukraine now has put many Americans and technology users worldwide on high alert. We'll tell you more about it on that program on cyber attacks and hackers. We'll give you some tips of how to stay safe. Well, thanks for joining us here on Perspectives. Have a great week ahead. Thanks for watching Fox 10 News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, our streaming news app, and you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.